length of time that you spend in post-crash survival depends to an extent on the effectiveness of your signals. Important facts to remember when signaling are Know how to use the signaling device. Have signals ready for quick use. Use them in a manner that doesn't jeopardize safety. Knowledge is the key to effective signaling. Knowledge not only of the signaling devices provided in your kits, but also knowledge of how to construct improvised signals. Most signaling devices have instructions posted on them. Read these instructions well in advance of actual equipment use and, if possible, practice with your equipment. Signaling devices, for our general purpose, are divided into four different categories. Pyrotechnics, those that use fire or ballistics. Electronic, radios, electronic locator transmitter or strobe light. Improvised, made from other items. Smoke and fire. Pyrotechnics is a fancy way of describing flares. Flares that can be purchased on the open market are usually very effective. Since you may be dealing with fire and ballistics, personal safety is of the utmost importance. Flares are typically divided into three categories, smoke, fire, or ballistic. The effectiveness of the smoke type flare is dependent on wind. High winds will cause the smoke to disperse. Foliage. This could trap the smoke in brush and trees. To combat problems with wind, keep the flare low to the ground and the wind to your back. When dealing with foliage, get into a clearing to use the flare. Another problem with a smoke flare is its tendency to externally burn. This is a problem found mainly with older flares. If you activate the flare and you notice flames coming out, either tap it lightly on the ground or douse it in water momentarily. When a fire type flare is activated, it will burn a bright red flame that extends about one foot from the end of the flare and will burn for eight seconds or more. When using, don't look directly into the flame as it may injure your retina. Keep the flare stationary. If you wave it abruptly, you could shake loose some of the burning material and cause a skin burn. Another readily available type of flare is the ballistically launched flare, which can reach an altitude of 200 to 1400 feet when launched. The flare may either burn from the time it is launched, or it may not burn until it reaches peak altitude, where it bursts into a flare that burns for about 10 seconds. When using this type of flare, be very careful. When loading a flare into the launcher, always grasp it by the sides. Never pound a flare into the launcher. One of the biggest problems with this type of flare is misfires. If you try to launch a flare and nothing happens, pull down on the trigger mechanism once more. If at this point nothing happens, ensure that the flare is all the way down in the launcher. Try once more to launch the flare. If it does not work, use a new flare. Always keep flares and launcher pointed away from you and others. When firing this flare, take wind speed and direction into consideration. Try to position flares directly overhead. Never fire flares directly at any aircraft or rescue party. The electronic signaling devices found in survival kits and rafts could be the difference in your being a survivor for a few hours or for a few days. Knowing the proper procedures when using these signals will be the main factor in this difference. These devices can broadcast a signal over many miles, but if you don't know how to use them properly, they may be rendered ineffective. ELTs, emergency locator transmitters, may be located in three areas. In the aircraft, in the life raft, and in kits. The ELT located on the aircraft is the one that is probably most overlooked. This is an emergency radio transmitter that operates from its own power source on 121.5 megahertz and 243.0 megahertz. It aids in locating downed aircraft by radiating an audio tone two to four times per second. It should function automatically after a given jolt or impact as would occur in an accident. The inspection of this ELT is often left up to the maintenance personnel. However, the ELT should be regularly checked by the pilot, either visually or audibly. To visually check the ELT, 
select the test mode and check the indicator light. To audibly check the ELT, you must dial the aircraft radio to 121.5 MHz, place the ELT in the test mode, and listen for the swept tone. You are limited to three sweep tones, and it needs to be accomplished during the first five minutes of any hour. Additionally, it will also be a good idea to tune the radio to 121.5 MHz after hard landings to see if the ELT was accidentally activated. ELTs work in conjunction with the SARSAT search and rescue satellite system. When the ELT is activated after a forced landing, an omnidirectional swept tone will be broadcast on 121.5 MHz and received by orbiting satellites. The satellites will then relay the signal to a local user terminal. The LUT then processes and pinpoints the signal back to the source. This system can pinpoint your location within 10 nautical miles. A handheld aircraft transceiver is another item that can save your life. It gives you the advantage of two-way communication. When using transceivers, consider the following. Activated ELTs, aircraft or raft ELTs, will override the voice capability, especially when using 121.5 MHz. Line of sight. The signal can be blocked by obstacles, terrain, or foliage. Cone of silence. There is an area at the top of an antenna where a signal cannot be heard. Remember, when using an aircraft radio transmitter, turn off all working ELTs. If an aircraft is approaching and you are attempting to communicate with it, don't point the antenna directly at the aircraft, as this will put the aircraft in the cone of silence. Try transmitting on two frequencies. 121.5 MHz is the international distress frequency, and 243.0 MHz is the military guard frequency. If you're not sure of what type aircraft is approaching, try both frequencies to establish communication. The aircraft's radio may still function even after the crash. If you are able to get to it, try to see if it can be used, but make sure that you give enough time for the aircraft to cool and eliminate the chance of fire. The strobe light is an electronic device that emits a continuous flashing light. If used in a continuous mode, it will continually flash for about nine hours. It will be a judgment call either to let it continuously flash or in cycles. The only consideration would be that an aircraft may be able to see the light before you hear the aircraft approaching. But again, this is going to be a judgment call. Another effective signal could be improvised using the aircraft battery with salvageable aircraft lights. However, this is risky because of the fire and chemical hazards of the battery. Be sure the battery is not cracked or leaking. If you find yourself without any signaling devices, you will have to improvise. When improvising, you are taking an item used for one purpose and adapting it to your needs. An improvised signal can be made or taken right out of the kit or salvaged from the aircraft. How you improvise is basically limited by your own imagination. When surveying all your survival resources, have an open mind. If you cannot use a particular item for its intended use, use it for something you need. The salvageable parts from your aircraft are a virtual treasure chest of survival needs. The signal mirror is considered by many as the most effective signaling device you can carry. Flashes from signal mirrors have been spotted over 25 miles from their source. A signal mirror works best on clear sunny days, but is still effective even on cloudy and overcast days. Even if you don't hear an aircraft approaching, you may still want to make sweeping motions just over the horizon. You never know. It could work. If you don't have a signal mirror, improvise. The hologram on a credit card, a CD, the aluminum skin of the aircraft, all can be effective. When using smoke and fire as signal, you must consider the type of environment you are in. When dealing with fire as a signal, it is apparent that it must be out in the open. As a general rule, three fires in the shape of a triangle, 100 feet apart, is a sign of distress. Three fires in a straight line along a creek or river are also an international distress signal. But any fire out in the open will be just as effective. An old signaling trick is to torch a lone evergreen. 
find an evergreen that is isolated from the group. Basically, what you want to do is to build a bird's nest of tinder on one of the lower boughs. When you hear an aircraft approaching, light the tinder and stand back. When using smoke, your primary consideration is to contrast smoke with the environment. Also keep in mind that smoke is most effective on calm, clear days. In light or snow-covered environments and on cloudy, overcast days, use black smoke. In a dark or forested area and on clear days, use white smoke. To produce a black type smoke, you should burn coniferous trees such as evergreens. Any petroleum product, JP4, hydraulic fluid, oil. Any rubber or plastic based items such as tires. Note, when burning any rubber or petroleum products, keep out of the smoke. It may contain toxic compounds. To produce a white smoke, Try burning the following. Green wood, green or dry leaves, moss, peat, or ferns. The effectiveness of your smoke will generally depend on how high the smoke can rise. The hotter the fire, the higher the smoke will rise. To further enhance white smoke, you can activate a smoke generating flare to enhance the signal. It is also possible to communicate a specific message to an aircraft flying overhead without having a two-way radio. The shapes that you make should be designed with a 6 to 1 ratio, preferably 18 feet high by 3 feet wide. When you use a surface-to-air rescue code, keep in mind the acronym CCLAS. C. Contrast. It should contrast with the surrounding environment. C. Condition. Keep the signal in good repair and keep an eye on weather conditions. L. Location. The signal should be able to be seen from 360 degrees. A. Angularity. Keep all angles sharp. S. Size. The bigger the better. 18 feet by 3 feet minimum. Some helpful hints in construction. 1. Elevate the signal about 3 feet off the ground. Elevation causes the signal to cast a shadow, which makes it more effective. 2. Orient the signal so that it will cast a shadow for most of the day. East to west is best. 3. Keep all vegetation stamped down immediately around the signal. It will make the signal look even bigger. In snowy areas, simply stamp out any letter of the alphabet. Lining it with pine boughs or green vegetation will also enhance the signal. Here are some basic considerations for signaling in specific regions. Tropics. In the tropics, set up fires and other signals in natural clearings and along edges of streams. Signals under dense growth won't be seen. Transceivers are your best method to signal. Carry an extra handheld unit. 2. Desert. You can make a good improvised flare with a can filled with sand and soaked with petroleum. Light the mixture carefully. Add additional petroleum to produce a thick, dark smoke. If you can find brush in the area, gather it in piles and have it ready to light when an aircraft is heard. Smoke is best used for day and fires for night. The mirror is a very effective desert signaling device. Practice with it. 3. C. Remember to get your ELT activated as soon as possible. Use only one at a time. Practice signaling with the mirror from the raft. Some raft paddles are coated with a material that reflects searchlights and sunlight. Be sure you can find, identify, and use flares in the dark. Use sea dye markers only during the day. Don't use them during rough seas. In calm waters, they will remain conspicuous for up to three hours. At night, use any light source for a signal. Flashlights, chem lights, strobe lights, and LPU lights may attract attention. Signaling devices and techniques available for use are numerous. The key to using them effectively is to practice. Practice before you are in a survival situation, not following it. With a few resources and a good imagination, you can master signaling and expedite your own rescue.